right. Is this even on? Oh, there we go. Professionalism and video conferencing. Fun one today. All right, and three, two, one. Hello everyone, thank you for coming out today to our virtual event. My name is Evan Furness. I'm a network engineer here at Twin State Technical Services, and I'll be leading you through how to give your video conferencing sessions a little bit more of a professional look. For eight years, I have worked on various productions and live streams, whether they be online, kind of like this, or uh, in-person productions with a studio and a team. These days, when I'm not here working as a network engineer at Twin State Technical Services, I'm a videographer, photographer, and an editor for various YouTubers with views on my videos getting around or over 12 million views on YouTube. With my work in content creation, I work with my YouTubers on how to deliver quality videos and quality stories to their audiences on YouTube. Today, I'm going to be working with you all, just like I do my content creators, teaching you various techniques and methods to bring a cleaner look to your video conferencing setups. I am going to be taking questions after the presentation and answering all your questions. So you could type those in the chat at any time and I'll be documenting those as we go. If at any point through the presentation you feel like you learned a little bit of something new, feel free to head over to our Google page. The link is down below in the description and leave a review about, about what exactly you did learn and how it's helping you and your business and your video conferencing setups. While you're down there in the description, there is also the link to sign up for the Twin State Technical Services newsletter. Feel free to send that to any and all of your friends as we host these virtual free events quite often and anyone can sign up for them and well, hey, you might learn something new. All right, and before we get into equipment or lighting or anything too technical, I think it's important to understand what makes a good shot look good. So first let's talk about where you should be at in the video in the frame itself. But before we even get into that, it is important to think about before you even turn on the camera, what might be in the frame of the camera. A super common mistake and an easy one to fix at that is if your desk is in the shot, be sure to clean up your desk a little bit because what you don't want is people not focusing on you, but focusing on your desk that is dirty in the background or any other objects in the background that could interfere with your shot. Really, really think through everything that is in the frame of your video. This also means things that are purposefully put in the frame. For example, here I spent a few hours really trying out different camera locations in my office here to figure out where exactly would look best for this presentation. I slightly rearranged my shelves to give some slightly more interesting objects on this side of the frame and my whiteboard where I keep track of a lot of everything that I do, I wanted that in the frame just because it's an interesting piece in the background. But besides that, we don't really have anything else too interesting or too distracting in the frame itself. Next, we want to find a spot in your house or in your office where there's some significant depth in the shot. Now, my office is fairly small here at my house, so I take advantage of the diagonal of the room. This gives me the most amount of depth possible in the space that I have to work in. If you have a longer room available to you, set yourself up where the full length of the room is shown behind you. Now, if you are in an office environment, this can include people uh, working in the background frame of your shot. Just be aware that they are in your shot. Mainly, we don't want your person to be flat up against the wall. While this may keep your shot clean and you don't have to worry about extra things in the frame itself, it does not allow for a good depth of field and it makes your lighting just a little bit more difficult and unpleasant to look at. Now that you're placed in your room and everything in the frame is exactly where you want it to be, where should you be at in the shot? For this, we will refer to the rule of thirds. Most of the time for a standard video conferencing setup where it is just you in the shot, we want to make sure that you're centered in the frame. From there, we want your eyes to be located on that top third line and your head to be centered between 
the right and the left third. Pause. Notice here that I'm currently not centered in the frame and my eyes are not on that top third line. Notice how much headroom that leaves at the top of the frame. I noticed this while recording and adjusted accordingly. Putting your eyes on that top third line just leaves a little bit of room above your head and that's exactly what we want. Too much room above your head and the shot feels empty. Cutting the top of your head off makes the shot feel too full. Great, now the basics of the composition of your shot are complete and now we get into something a little bit more technical but very very important and that is your lighting. For our lighting we're going to go over a simple three light setup that is going to get your lighting in a pretty good place. A good start is let's get uh, two desk lamps and two light bulbs that are around 5500 Kelvin. This Kelvin number refers to the amount of warmth or coolness in the image and that's how either orange or red it looks versus how blue or green it looks. Around 5500 Kelvin, this is what we generally refer to as a daylight light, which provides a pretty clean light over your face. If you'd like, you could substitute one desk lamp out for a window. For example, I am using just my window here to my right to light up the right side of my face. It is super important here that we don't just rely on any overhead lighting that you may have in your office. This creates really unpleasant shadows from your brows that go down underneath your eyes, to your nose, to your mouth, and your chin, all the lighting and all the shadows are vertical down your face. Now for either your two desk lamps or your window and a desk lamp, we're going to want to position one of these desk lamps up and to the left of your person. This could also be to the right, but for my case, this is the left, and this is called my key light. This is the main light in my lighting setup. This is the light that's providing the most light for me. Now my window, I am using as a fill light. If I turn off my key light here and use my window instead of my key light, you'll see the dramatic shadow that it casts across my face. So you'll see now that I have my key light off and now that I'm using my window as my key light, you'll see that there's a lot of shadow here on the left side of my face. This is fine if that's the look that you're going for. You can roll with just one key light. Just be aware that there is a pretty dramatic shadow on your face. This is usually used in movies to present a little more bit more of a dramatic look, but it can be used in a video conferencing setup as well. All right, and now we've got that key light back on. So once again, we have our key light up here to my left, and we wanna make sure that it is above, just slightly above your head. So mine's about about a foot or two above my head, and that just puts a like a diagonal shadow across my face. But then my fill light, make sure that it's not too dramatic across my face as well. Now, and you heard me mention earlier, about a three light setup, but we've only went over two lights and I already look pretty good if I do say so myself. But there is a very important third light that's actually currently present in this scene. And that light is right up here out of frame. And all it's doing is shining on my back. When you shine a light onto the back of your person, it provides a nice little light across your shoulders and the back of your head. And this is what we call a hairline light. Now the window is actually positioned in a way that it's kind of a fill light and a little bit of a hairline light for me. Uh, but what this light does and the, the purpose of this light is to provide separation between your person and the background behind you. Once again, technically you could probably just roll with just a key light of a window or a key light of a desk lamp and be just fine. But this simple three light setup adds a lot of value into the production of your video conferencing and in your shot. So if you can manage to get all three lights set up and ready for you, I would definitely recommend to have all three of the lights. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that the hairline light that sits behind you, mine is currently just a slightly warmer uh, light color, so it's that slightly orange or red tinted light, but you can also have some fun with it and you can use various colors, green, blue, yellow, whatever you want, and put those various colors behind you. Just play around with the hairline light being different colors because you don't want your shot to be too over-colored. So play around with positioning of that hairline light. Once again, you just want it kind of shining on the back of your person and you don't want it to be in the frame of the shot necessarily. I have had hairline lights before that do just shine onto the back of my person and then I have just a fun colored LED in the background that you can see. That's also fine. That just adds some color into the background of your shot. With these three lights, you can be confident that your setup is as professionally lit as possible 
and that you go into your video meeting or virtual meeting looking pretty good. While having your setup down to a science is super important, there are a few more technical aspects that I want to uh, brush over real quick that I just want you to be aware of because if you're not aware of these, they can definitely compromise your video quality a little bit. And you might also be questioning, well, I had this good lighting. I made sure I followed all of Evan's steps to put myself in the frame properly, but my video still looks blocky and it just does not come through very well. And this can all be because of your network connection. So while you might have all of the technical lighting and composition right, if your laptop, computer, or other video recording device doesn't have a very strong network connection at the location that you're planning on being recorded for your meeting, then your video is going to experience some choppiness and some blockiness. Now your meeting application will do its best to keep the quality as high as it can throughout the video conference, but at the same time your meeting application also prioritizes audio because that's the main thing that's going on in the meeting. You're needing to hear your coworkers or whoever you're meeting with more so than you're needing to see them. So your meeting application will compromise the quality of your video to make sure that the quality of your audio stays pretty good. The next factor to be aware of, and you can't really do a ton about this besides making sure that your network connection is good, but that's called video compression. Video compression is normal and unavoidable. Compression is what allows us to send even video over the internet for others to see because it takes a fairly large video file and compresses it down into a smaller size and sends it out. Now you're actually probably fairly familiar with video compression and that's the squares that you see uh, on your coworkers in meetings, uh, the, the blockiness that happens on the video. These meeting applications compress the video by taking light colored pixels from the video and making them all one color. And they do this in square sections. This means that per frame of the video, there are less colors in the frame, allowing there to be less data to be sent over the network connection. Now, the better internet connection that you have, the less the meeting application actually has to compress the video file before sending it out over the internet. This ultimately results in a slightly better look to your video while in your meeting. Lastly, something that a lot of people don't realize is that your computer or device could be hindering your video quality. When in a meeting, you should close any unneeded programs or tasks that are running to make sure that your meeting application has all the available resources that it needs throughout the meeting. If you are working on an older device and you're commonly told that your video isn't really up to par, it might be time to be looking to a new device because it could be a mixture of the camera that you're using with the older hardware of the computer. A really good note that I'll add is that if your meeting is more of a presentation than a meeting, consider using a live streaming platform like YouTube Live versus a meeting application like Zoom or Teams or GoToMeeting. Live streams will overall give you a better quality video, but are a little bit harder to set up. If one or two people are going to be talking for the majority of the meeting, can really, really consider setting up one of these live streams. Another thing to note with the live streams is that then you don't have to be muting people or making sure that people are muted during the presentation and not interrupting the presenters. Now let's discuss which meeting platform you should be using. Most of you probably already have a meeting platform. In that case, keep using the one that you're using because the differences between them are minor. What it comes down to mainly is which is more cost effective for your business. If you're currently using Microsoft 365, you might already have Microsoft Teams. Check with your engineer to see if you do. If you do have it, great. Otherwise, you might have to upgrade your subscription to get the license that includes Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams isn't just a meeting platform. It also includes chat and files and a whole lot of other stuff. So be sure to discuss with the TSTS member if this is a good fit for you. This also applies for organizations currently in G Suite or Google. Google Meet is your option and is included in the G Suite package. For everyone else that isn't in G Suite or Microsoft 365 and you haven't decided on a plan yet, you should look into Zoom or GoToMeeting. Zoom is widely renowned for being simple to set up and easy to use for all parties. GoToMeeting is just the same. It's also great and it's a little bit cheaper for the lowest plan. Overall, you should just try out each program yourself to see which interface best fits your needs and your organization's needs. All right, now let's talk about equipment for a little bit. I'm going to give you three different packages of different price ranges. The first of which is the 
beginner or the lowest price range to get decent quality stuff for your video conferencing setup. Outlined in green here, you will see the Logitech C922X Pro Stream webcam. This can be any webcam, but let's make sure that it's an external webcam. We don't want to use the one inside the laptop because the camera itself just isn't very good. You don't have a lot of control over the colors or anything like that. Also included in this kit is the lighting umbrella kit. This will include two of those 5,500 Kelvin daylights along with two umbrellas and two stands to give you your key light and your fill light. And last but certainly not least is a beginner microphone, the Blue Snowball. This is a very good brand of microphone uh, and it's just $50 and you just plug it into your laptop via a USB port and it works. All right, and next we have our intermediate price range option and not much changes from the beginner option, but our quality does go up quite a bit. So one of the main features of this is the Blue Yeti microphone. We're changing from the Snowball to the Yeti. It's just a little bit better of a USB microphone. This is used quite commonly among podcasters and streamers. Now we are gonna stick with the same uh, lighting umbrella kit, the 5500 Kelvin daylight lighting setup. And we're also gonna stay with the webcam. Now we are adding a tripod into the mix. The webcam does have the ability to be mounted on a tripod. This allows you to take your live streaming setup or your video conferencing setup uh, anywhere in your office or in your house to make sure that you can get your composition and your lighting just right. All right, and lastly here outlined in the TSTS blue, we have the professional setup, the best that we can possibly uh, get. And that includes an actual full camera. The I listed the Sony Alpha A6400. That's what you've been seeing uh, me filmed with with this setup. To get the footage onto your computer, you're gonna need an Elgato Cam Link 4K that just takes the video from the camera and puts it into the laptop. You're gonna need a tripod, of course, to mount that camera on. And then we upgraded the lighting to a actual full softbox. Now these are 5400 Kelvin, but that's a, just a little bit cooler of a lighting, but that's okay. Then we have some cables just to make sure that we can connect the camera up to the cam link and also keep it powered on throughout the entire presentation or recording. We also upgraded the microphone to a Shure MV7 USB microphone. The Shure brand is used by a lot of musicians and has recently been introducing themselves into the podcast and streaming realm. Uh, this is a great mic. Once again, it's just USB. You just plug it into your computer and it works and you can adjust all your levels and anything else that you'll need to do. With that microphone, I also included, uh, there's two different versions of microphone arm. If, if you want to mount that arm to your desk, the Rode PSA one is the one that I have. And then there's the inner gear microphone arm. I've had this one before. I just upgraded to the Rode, but it is a very good microphone arm as well for especially just $15. The link to this entire Amazon Amazon list is down below in the description. Feel free to poke through there and see which ones fit into your budget. And if you have any questions about the equipment, we are about ready to go into the question phase. So be sure to put your questions in the chat to the right. All right, everyone, that is the end of the presentation portion of this event. Uh, I'm going to start going over questions now. So feel free to leave them in the YouTube live chat. If you've already asked a question, I have received that, noted it. I'm about ready to go over them uh, in the order that they came in. I'll try to get to as many as I can, but I look forward to answering your questions. And if you haven't already, and you did learn something from this presentation, remember to visit the link in the description and go and leave some stars on our Google page telling people what exactly you did learn today in the presentation. Hello everyone, uh, we are now live and this is the Q&A portion uh, of the video. Uh, I thank you guys for coming out today and seeing this. I do wanna start by just saying that that entire video along with this Q&A uh, will be posted on our YouTube channel so that you can rewatch it as many times as you need to see any critical information. Uh, I know everything's kind of went through very fast, but I wanted to leave plenty of time for the uh, question portion of, of uh, this presentation. Uh, I haven't seen any questions come up in the chat, so feel free to leave them in there now. Uh, but I'm going to start by saying uh, a question that I had and one that I assume that a lot of you are thinking is, well, I have a desk and 
I can't set up a bunch of studio lights and a bunch of other stuff. So how can I, <laughs> how can I get a more professional look with just my laptop webcam and my mic? And really that comes down to lighting. Uh, I would really tr try to find a place in your office that is near a window because that natural daylight whether it's cloudy or sunny it doesn't matter it all looks great uh, that daylight coming in through the window will just light up your face so face the window and put the laptop in front of you and try to get as much lighting as you can on your face um, if you want to use that more as your key light you can just turn slightly so there's a little bit of shadow on one side of your face um, that'll that'll take care of a lot of uh, your issues and, and clean up your quality quite a bit. Um, we've got a question here from Lisa. What is the best light for a laptop or desktop for video calls? Um, in the in the Amazon link below here, I'll go ahead and post this in here. Uh, there's a couple different lights in, in that. Now, those are kind of studio lights, uh, but what you can do is you can go and get just a regular desk lamp, and then you're going to look at, uh, at the store for any light bulb that says 5,500 uh, Kelvin. They're usually labeled as daylight. Uh, we want to stay away from any lights that say warm because that's going to give you that orangey uh, orangey look that looks kind of like an older video once you get it set up on your laptop. So, we want just a desktop or just a desk lamp, sorry, with a uh, with a 5500 or roughly 5500 Kelvin uh, light bulb. I was just at Menards yesterday uh, looking just for this pre this presentation. I saw a few that are like 5400, 5500, 5600 Kelvin, uh, but we just want to stay in that range um, for those. Now, also there are the ring lights that you've probably seen around uh, Walmart or wherever, those also work very well because they're small and compact. They can clip to your monitor, they can clip to your desk and just sit there and be your single key light. And for most desks, that, that's just fine. You can uh, set that up, leave your key light. You're probably gonna wanna make sure that that light covers about 75% of your face, leaving the other 25% just a little bit shadowed and lit by the rest of the room, but that'll, that'll light you up pretty well. I also want to uh, reiterate, I know we talk a lot about lighting, a lot about composition in this, and that's like the main thing that will um, make your video quality look good, and this is video conferencing, but if we think about video conferencing and yourself when you're sitting in one of those meetings or a presentation, you might have the tab minimized and you're not even looking at the video of the other person. Um, or you're checking something on your phone or you're writing stuff down so you're not even looking at the video. What you do uh, take in is the audio. Um, you're always listening to that presentation. So we want to make sure that your um, microphone is, is really good and the, the laptop or desktop uh, microphones that come in it are are not very good. You're going to get a very tinny sounding audio and it's really a pretty cheap fix. Any USB microphone is going to in, um, better the quality of your audio. So even if you just go to Amazon and you type in US, USB microphone, those microphones will even uh, make it better. The beginner package has the uh, blue, uh, snowball blue microphone in it for about $50. I know a ton of people that use those and they work great. They just sit right on your desk and we'll just sit here and your webcam or whatever will be in front of you. And that's that. It's a condenser microphone, so it picks up all the audio coming out in a cone like that. So it's a pretty good fix. At least asking what video platform is the best for webinars or presentations. I really love YouTube Live, and that's for this this specific reason um, that we're doing right here. Uh, obviously, I'd love to be in a chat or even in the room talking to you all, but the uh, but for presentations, we want to make sure that the the audience isn't uh, potentially a distraction from the presenter. 
the when you're in a zoom call you have to make sure everybody's muted also everybody has their cameras up so people might be looking at everybody else's camera and not the presenter's camera even if they are muted so for presentations uh, webinars things where you're going to have one or two people talking you want to use something like youtube live now to do youtube live you can kind of see here on my uh, back monitor here i'm using something called obs studio and i can grab that link here and throw it in the chat. Um, OBS Studio, what that does is you can set up scenes and um, and pre-play videos or you, you can do a lot with it. So it monitors your audio levels and everything and then your YouTube Live gives you a stream key and you put that into OBS Studio and boom, they are linked and you just hit start streaming and you're live. And that's kind of how this worked. So, uh, for example, the uh, the initial screen here was just this one. Uh, it's kind of hard to see there, but on the left-hand side of me, uh, this one here. And you can just transition between scenes and it's just like running a full production studio all by yourself. Uh, how to shoot a room with multiple people in it, like a conference room. So in the, uh, in the equipment list that I listed, there is a Sony Alpha A6400 camera that includes the kit lens, which is a 16 to 50 millimeter, which means that's going to be a pretty wide angle lens. You're going to be able to fit a lot of people in it. Uh, I'm currently recording on a 35 to make sure that I can get a little bit more of my room in it. And it's not just centered on me. But that 16 millimeter lens is going to keep a lot of uh, people in it. Now, the issue or the, the biggest uh, or the hardest thing that comes with how do you mic everyone and get everyone um, everyone's audio in? Now, if they're on a Zoom present or if they're if we're doing a YouTube live and it's all online, we would uh, get the presenters all in a Zoom call or a any of your meeting uh, platform choices just to where you can hear everyone. And from there, you can actually pull the audio from the Zoom meeting or the online meeting and put it into OBS. And then it comes out the YouTube live presentation for everyone else to watch. How to look good if you have a shiny or thinning hairline. Oh man. Um, I would say that the darker the image, probably the better. The, uh, obviously if you have more light you're going to have more shine you're going to have more emphasis on the uh on the hairline so the i would recommend only having that one key light that lights the one side of your face that would uh that would help with that a little bit um besides that just own it uh <laughs> i think that's the best way to go about it Um, any other questions here? We've got a lot of a lot more time. Um, does anyone want to bring up what their current setup is and talk about how maybe you're going to take the what you've learned from the presentation today and uh, maybe change some things around? Or where do you normally do your meetings? Do you do them at home uh, over Zoom or or Teams? Or how 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 are you currently doing it? Thank you, Lisa. I really do appreciate that. I know everything went through, got went through really fast, but uh, but in the end, it's it's best to take each part of this probably later and take the lighting portion and really and and compare the lighting portion to the equipment and what we've talked about with like the desk lamps and the fifty five hundred uh, Kelvin light bulbs and try to fix your lighting a little bit in the best way possible. Um, and then uh, focus on your composition and see how, how you can uh, go go through there. I use Zoom the most for meetings. Zoom is great. Like I talked about in the presentation, Zoom's biggest appeal, in my opinion, is the ease of use of setting up invite links and getting those out to people. Um, when you get the invite link, it's a simple download. 
and boom, you're in the meeting. It's not that hard. Uh, Teams has a couple more hoops to jump through if they're not already in Microsoft 365, but the back end of Teams with having uh, chat and team Teams activities and scheduling and all that for your internal uses is really useful as well. What color clothing would you recommend for a better and more professional look? Um, once I'll answer that in just a second, and Lisa said, do you always make events on LinkedIn? Um, Micah, Micah would be a better person to answer that. And, um, he can answer that in the text chat with the twin state technical services, um, account, but what color clothing, uh, the main thing is, is you don't want to blend in too much. When I went through a couple different jackets for the initial recording, now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't be wearing gray with this gray background just because I kind of blend in a little bit more. When we talk about that depth of field and the um, separating you from the background, that's super important. And if you are wearing colors that are the same as your background, that's uh, no go. So probably a, <laughs> probably a knock on my pr- own presentation there, but uh but definitely things that contrast with your background very well. I would stay away from anything that is warm as well, uh, pink, red, orange. And that's only because the way when you balance out your lighting beforehand, you'll notice that it's really hard to keep the reds and oranges and pinks the right color compared to your skin color you'll try to turn down because your face is super red you'll try to turn down the warmth and then you're super pale um or washed out even and then you try to turn them up and balance it but now your shirt is super um super apparent in the image the lighting discussion was helpful um well thank you for that comment and th- uh, also well um, while you're giving the feedback, be sure to, uh, leave that on our Google page here. I'll link that in the chat that is right there. Um, just leave a review about what you learned today and something that you might be integrating into your own setup. How do you feel about the blue screens that can be used to block out the background? I think, um, they've gotten a lot better. There's been uh, a lot of improvement probably because of the need for it over, uh, the last year. Um, in the beginning, the, uh, artificial intelligence that tried to separate you from the background was kind of choppy. Uh, I don't think if you are the presenter, you should probably be using that. Um, I think it comes down to that you are presenting and that is, that is the look that you're giving off to your audience. Um, so take some time and give the setup some love to make sure that it looks and feels exactly how you'd want it to be, uh, which I assume would be as professional as possible. Um, if you're in a general meeting with coworkers and it's more casual or laid back, I don't think it's a bad idea, especially if you have a lot going on behind you. Um, like I said, the composition of the shot is really important. We don't want a lot of clutter in the shot or a lot of things that are distracting uh, the audience from the presenter. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. But they have improved the AI a lot in the last year. Um, some are better than others. I think, if I remember right, I was reading that Zooms is the uh, is the leader in like background AI AI technology in terms of how it separates you from the background. Are there any microphones to drown out the noise of other people in a busy office? Okay, this is a this is a very um, hard question in, in, t- in terms of like answering um, easily. So this right here is a Shure uh, SMB7 microphone. Uh, fun fact, that's actually the microphone that uh, Michael Jackson used to record Thriller. Uh, but So this microphone's been around for a while, but this is a dynamic microphone, which means that it is only p- picking up audio within this range right here. Uh, for the most part, obviously, if there's a loud noise uh, somewhere else, that will affect it. But it's really only sensitive to the things that are really close to it. That's why it's so close to my face right now. 
Now the other type of microphone that you're gonna see, and this is gonna be a lot of the USB microphones, is the condenser microphone. The condenser more shoots out and takes audio from a given area. It's gonna be a lot more sensitive. You're gonna to have to play with it a lot more. Um, there is technology in that's a little bit complicated to set up, but you can take a condenser microphone or your web uh, webcam like laptop microphone and run that microphone through a software that uh, uses artificial intelligence to take out the background noise and then sends it to your like teams or meeting application. Um, it's in real time, so it doesn't like it doesn't delay the audio or anything. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but I have used those before and those are really good. The one that comes to mind is the NVIDIA. Um, I think it's called NVIDIA Broadcaster, but your, your Teams, Zoom, I believe they all have noise gates as well. So what a noise gate is to explain that real quick is there is always going to be an ambient level of noise that is going on in the room which is like when I'm not talking. So whatever you hear there, you can set the noise gate above that and it will only pick up audio that breaks that noise gate. So there's, if we're talking in audio waves, if it's small, you can set it just slightly above that. And then when you talk, it peaks above that line and it picks up that audio. So use your noise gates, really play with your audio settings. And I know they're adding more and more to all these different online meeting platforms as they become more prevalent. Lisa, we also cross post and publish our events on Facebook and local chambers of commerce calendars. Yes, yes, what he said. Um, once again, just to reiterate the this whole presentation will be posted on our YouTube page so that you can go back and look at those things. Um, I'll, pro I'll try to find some of those uh, AI filters that you can use for your microphone and put, throw them in the link uh, or in the description for you to click on and, and investigate those. How can you incorporate your branding as video in the background? So there's actually a really cool feature with OBS Studio to where I can use OBS Studio to send my video and audio to directly to Teams. Uh, I know it works for Teams. I haven't tried it with Zoom or GoToMeeting or the Google Meet, um, just because that's Teams is what uh, we use here at Twin State. But the best way for that is then you can drop um, images onto the picture. And let me see here if I can just give you a a quick little example. Say I want to put the thumbnail for this video in the corner just so everybody knows what we're talking about if they're joining in late. Um, we can do something like that. And that adds a little bit of branding into your video. Um, you can also do this with logos and you can kind of animate them in OBS Studio to where they like spin or or come in and out or that sort of thing. I would say that's the best way to do it. Um, a great thing about doing YouTube Live is just how we've uh, we've been going through and posting links to our newsletter and, um, and our review pages and, and our website and the equipment that we recommend. You can, in YouTube Live, while you're presenting, say a product or services that you offer, you can provide links that provide more information. Because like I said earlier, when people are in a presentation like this, they tend to not watch as much of the video, but just listen in the background. And then when things pique their interest, they come back to the video. But uh, so you might post a link about your services and then they click on that and they're still listening to you, but they're poking around on your website, which is exactly what you want to do to uh, get your audience integrated um, with your services or with your product. That's a really good question. Also, uh, I need to get more Twin State jackets, but you can wear your merch, <laughs> your company uh, merchandise on the video. That's always, a, that's always a good way. What 
we still got about 20 minutes if anyone else has any questions. Um, this has been this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate everyone coming out and uh, hopefully learning something new throughout this process. I know there's a lot to it. You think about sitting down at a meeting and you just open up your laptop and webcam and your mic just works and it, and it all functions. Um, but if you want to give yourself that next level, especially if you're doing client presentations, that's a really important thing because you want to look um, as professional as possible during those. Um, this is a great start. That beginner setup with just getting a webcam, some good lights and a microphone is going to take you a long ways. The, the increments in terms of um, how much better you can get. I think there's obviously like a studio production level, but the difference between that beginner package that I linked and that studio production level is maybe about 30 to 40%, but the the cost difference between them is uh, $200 to $2,000. So the in terms of like a cost-benefit analysis real quick, the the beginner package with just that webcam, the lights, and a good microphone to plug in is great. To go over your webcam. To... Um, my opinion on those shades or, um, or how would that work in terms of like a webcam? I know when for like a personal webcam, um, uh, obviously there's some of them include a shade, but I, the one that I linked does not, um, depending on how you're doing it, you can always, instead of using the shade in a meeting to, uh, to switch off your webcam, you can always just hit the webcam option like so, and just turn off the camera itself and just leave your audio on now. Um, and you can do all that digitally. So instead of using a physical shade, you can always use the um, use the digital option. Now, afterwards, if you're still concerned about privacy with your webcam, you can unplug it. You can cover it up with, um, I've seen tape, post-its, uh, you name it. It's probably covering up a webcam. <laughs> Also a quick note um, about YouTube Live. Um, you do wanna be careful on your company pages to avoid any sort of copyright uh, infringement with music. Uh, the beginning music that I played in this stream is uh, from YouTube's audio library. If you go to studio.youtube.com, I can link that in here um, if I can type studio.youtube.com for your company's YouTube channel. You will see on the left-hand side a thing called audio library, and those are all copyright-approved music that you can use for your live streams on YouTube. Uh, YouTube provides those for you so you don't get copyright strikes on your channel, and the... Um, and the music's pretty good. You kind of have to look for a little bit, but the library is huge. I think there's like 30,000 songs or something in there. So poke around, find something that fits the, uh, the feeling of the video that you're trying to present on YouTube and go from there with that. All righty. I did not mean to click out of that, but I think we're good. Okay. We've got about 15 minutes left. Does anyone else have any other questions?
Yes, that's a great point. That was a great video um, that we put out previously on um, starting up your YouTube account. Um, since Google's taken over YouTube and, oh man, it was, it was uh, late 2000s when they, when they did that, the process of separating your Google account from your YouTube channel has become quite difficult, but Justin takes you through that and it's really a great video on how to separate those two and, and create a really professional looking uh, YouTube channel so that when people come to your channel and are looking at your videos, um, they have a good, a good feeling about it. Now, the, uh, I do want to just bring up how, how useful having a good video library is on YouTube. That's a great way for customers to figure out a lot about your products and services. So just keeping up on content, whether that be weekly or monthly, um, some sort of video on something that you're offering that month is a great way um, to keep engaged. And sometimes, just like this meeting, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that would have really liked to see this meeting uh, or this presentation, but just couldn't. Well, this is going to be live on our or uploaded to our YouTube channel after this, and people can watch it at any point in time. And and that's super valuable for for everyone involved. So. Keep that in mind that um, starting up your YouTube channel is a great great thing to do. And if you need any help with that, um, feel free to contact us and we can, we can make sure that your YouTube gets set up very professionally. And I don't think I have said it, but... Uh, I, I've talked about writing the reviews on our Google page if you learned anything new and signing up for the newsletter to make sure that you don't miss events like these, but also hitting the subscribe button down below will give um, will give you notifications when we do have a new video out uh, or it'll pop up in your recommended videos on YouTube for your company page. Uh, it's free to subscribe. There's not really a reason not to if you enjoyed the presentation so feel free uh feel free to do that but i do thank you for coming out today i think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there unless anyone has any other questions um just thinking in terms of our chaotic lives of working from home how do we quickly cover our sometimes real lives that jump into a conference call um like i like i mentioned earlier the digital way to mute and uh, cover your video is the quickest way. Um, you don't want to be fumbling around and unplugging cameras and mics and whatnot. Uh, the, all these meeting platforms put the camera and the microphone button right next to each other and you can turn them on and off super easily. easily. So just be aware of what's going on and, uh, and turn those off as needed. I always recommend to I know Teams is coming out with the feature, the push to talk feature, which means you're muted until you push the button and then you push the button and you're live and you un, uh, then you take your finger off of it and you're muted again. The push to talk feature is great, but um, when you're not talking or don't have anything to say, uh, mute your mic. It's common courtesy just to make sure that no nothing, um, no audio that you didn't want to have happen or come through the call uh, doesn't happen because it can't, It's you're muted. Now, video is a little bit more difficult because you obviously want your video streaming the entire time. But I think that also comes uh, comes down to um, if you can and you have the space available or you have um, have some corner that you can set up and make your presentation or your meeting area. I would definitely recommend doing that. That way. Also, it's especially hard with working from home, um, separating that work from home life. So I do always recommend setting up your own setup because then that when you're there, you are at work. And when you're not there, you are at home and, and you can kind of draw the line there. But yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you all for coming out. Like I said, this will be live on our YouTube channel shortly after this presentation ends. But uh, if you have any, qu any other questions, feel free 
to uh, give us a call. I'd be happy to answer those uh, questions for your own personal setups. And yeah, thank you for coming out. And we will see you in the next video or presentation. The newsletter will be the best place to see what all that covers and is coming out next. So have a great day. Have a great rest of your day. Week is almost over and we'll see you next time.